Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and in this video we'll be reviewing the scientifically accepted explanation for the Carolina Bays and why that explanation just doesn't add up in my opinion. Uh, then we'll go on a LiDAR virtual field trip uh, to investigate a few sites that I think prove this explanation needs to be re-evaluated. Re uh, if you are new to the topic of Carolina Bays, uh, please click on the link above and watch the entire series from the very beginning or click on this link if you want to pick up with the LiDAR uh, field trips and how you could play along. Okay, now you may remember that while there have been many hypothesized uh, explanations for the formation of the perfectly oriented elliptical Carolina Bays, you know, including things like giant fish nests, uh, with the current the current commonly accepted explanation is that they were shallow Pleistocene ponds that were reshaped by persistent wind and water patterns over the past 10 to 100,000 years or so. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos that there are numerous problems with this hypothesis. Uh, you know, one of these problems is that these elliptical shapes have never been recreated in the lab, you know, even under controlled conditions. Uh, they've come close, but but not perfect. So so how are we supposed to believe that the that tens of thousands of of these Carolina Bays could form the exact same shape uh, and be oriented in the exact same directions from from natural processes? Um, and and another uh, and I suspect more obvious problem with the current explanation is that by definition, every single one of these elliptical depressions should have had their beginnings as shallow ponds filled with water. Uh, you know, during a time that the current coastal plain would have been much cooler and drier uh, than it is today, you know, very prairie-like, and we, we mentioned that in the last video. Um, you know, this just doesn't seem to make sense to me at all. Uh, and in fact, you know, I've already mentioned Howard Bay in one of my previous videos uh, that was extensively studied by guys like Dr. Richard Firestone and Dr. Jim Kennett, and it was determined that it was never a pond before becoming a Carolina Bay. Um, I'm willing to bet that most of our Carolina Bays are what I'm going to call dry bays, meaning that they were never ponds to begin with, and that the only water that they contained was from the liquefaction process and the lower tide ice chunks that flew from the Saginaw Bay area after, after a primary impact uh, that created the Carolina Bays themselves. <laughs> so, so let's click over to the LiDAR and see if we can find some more dry Carolina Bays. All right, I'm going to start here with uh, Herndon Bay. Um, now, Herndon Bay is, is a bay that uh, has been determined to have been a pond or at least have contained evidence of it being a, a freshwater pond. Uh, this is one that, was a, that has been extensively studied by uh, guys like Dr. Chris Moore. Um, and, you know, again, they, they have determined that this area was a pond. And so, you know, because of that, we have this common scientifically accepted explanation that all of them uh, must have been created from ponds. Um, and again, I want to be able to go back and forth and show you the difference uh, between regular Google Earth and, and the LiDAR. But you can definitely tell that these are Carolina Bays. Uh, and again, they have been determined to have been a pond or at least have some form of freshwater source here in this area. Uh, and then right across the river here, and this is interesting to me, uh, right across the river here, we have Howard Bay right here. Uh, which is very interesting because this bay is actually in one of these floodplains that we talked about in, in some of my uh, previous videos. And there has been no evidence of this ever being a pond or having contained water before becoming a bay, uh, even though it looks like it, it should have been, like we should have had plenty of water running through here so, at some point. Uh, so, so very interesting that, that this pond here shows no evidence, while this pond over here, you know, that seems to be high and dry, does have evidence. So, so perhaps there is some reevaluation that needs to happen there as well. Um, now let's go to a couple areas that I, I think never contained water uh, ever uh, before becoming a Carolina Bay. And the first one is we're going to scoot right down here past Bamberg again. Uh, we've already looked at this area before. Uh, we talked about this when we discussed the, uh, the splash chevrons. Um, I do think that there was a lake over here. And I think that a Carolina Bay hit this area, or I'm sorry, a, a ice chunk hit this bay area, causing a splash chevron and all the sand to be washed up. But these bays that formed on top of these sand dunes 
um, I don't think ever contained water. And I mentioned this in the previous video as well, that, you know, the sand is extremely porous. Uh, and for a pond to form um, and, and, and have standing water in it long enough to reshape into this, these elliptical shapes, um, I, I think is, is very far-fetched and uh, definitely needs to be reevaluated for, for these Carolina Bays. Uh, I don't think that they ever contain water. And, and I, that goes for all of them that formed in these areas. Um, all right, so let me go to my second site. We're going to move north a little bit here. Uh, just past Big Bay, uh, and I talked about this area in my last video. Uh, I wanted to come back to it, uh, and you can see here there's just a series of Carolina Bays here. They look like they were they were hole punched right into the uh, the sand here. Um, I don't think any of these contained water. Um, however, and I'm going to come back to this one later on. Um, here is a very interesting Carolina Bay that I'm going to come back to, and I, I might even do a whole video on this one, uh, where we have a bay with a splash chevron, uh, which, which is very, very interesting. And here's another one here too that looks like it's been worked over quite a bit. Um, so we'll come back to that later. But yeah, all of these, basically what I'm saying is that I think that this one did contain water <laughs> and that water was and sand was splashed out. But these over here, I don't think had any water in them at all. You know, again, they just look like they were hole punched right into the, right into the sand. Um, all right, let's head out. Now, this is uh, neat. We're going to head up into the Piedmont area. Um, doesn't have a lot of Carolina Bay uh, or a lot of impact evidence, but there are some. And so, you know, again, this whole area. And, and I was going I was going to call these high bays, um, these bays that are up here on these ridges. Uh, and, and they're not really ridges. I mean, you know, when I click off the LIDAR, it looks fairly flat here in these areas. You know, this is all farmland in South Carolina uh, or North Carolina. And, um, but definitely when we click on the LIDAR, we can see that these are in fact, you know, ridges and, um, and, uh, you know, these are Carolina bays that formed on top of this area. I don't think, again, I don't think this was ever a pond to begin with, um, you know, but there was, must be enough, uh, loose sediment here for that liquefaction process and the, and the Carolina Bay to be formed, uh, not far away though, from all of these Carolina bays, uh, and so again, you know, just to show that this whole area was was just inundated with ice uh, is is very telling. All right, let me move down to my fourth site here, uh, even farther up. Now this is getting way up there too, um, and I'd like to spend more time finding more of these bays, uh, but it's it's they are hard to detect. Um, you know, but we have an area here where we have that elliptical shape. Uh, it is much higher. I don't think that this was a pond. Uh, to begin with. And again, we click off the LIDAR. You know, this wasn't something that, uh, here it is right here. This wasn't something that somebody, you know, built or something. You know, this is definitely a, a Carolina Bay. Uh, way, way, way up there. Uh, you may notice I did leave the, uh, the roads and the borders on this time. I wanted you to see where we were. Um, and then the last one I wanted to take a look at, um, is a sand ridge down here uh, just west of Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, it's still well into the Piedmont here, the upper portion of the Piedmont. And um, let this catch up. And uh, let me click off of this too. You can see here, you know, this whole entire sand ridge is is peppered with these Carolina bays uh, and the whole the rest of the area here the ground was too hard you know it, it didn't absorb uh, the impacts like you know these these sandy areas would have and so um, so again I don't think any of these were ponds I think that they were just happened to be in the con right conditions to to form a Carolina Bay um, and let me just back out again so we can see where we are you know, I basically spanned the entire East Coast here, north of South Carolina. Uh, lots of examples of areas that I think just never contain water to begin with uh, to form these Carolina Bays. You know, they must have formed from another reason. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm highly suggesting that it was an impact into the Saginaw Bay area uh, during our last ice age, sending huge chunks of ice into the, into the you know, areas here in the east coast uh, along the coastal plain and into the piedmont you know we, we see it's completely covered so anyways guys thanks and uh we'll catch you next time bye